It's like a piece of charcoal. Bring it over here. You want your steak? Yeah, right yeah. now. You bought me a of steak, huh? You bought me a of steak? Robert De Niro's legendary performance in Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull is proof that some actors will go to great lengths for their craft. De Niro's portrayal of boxer Jake LaMotta is widely regarded as one of the most committed and transformative performances in cinema history. To accurately depict LaMotta in his prime, De Niro underwent an intense physical training program, training extensively with the real Jake LaMotta. He even took part in three real boxing matches, winning two of them. De Niro didn't just focus on his physical transformation, he also studied LaMotta's accent and mannerisms to make sure he nailed the character's distinctive Bronx accent and mannerisms, even when the cameras weren't rolling. De Niro's dedication to the role even led to a dramatic physical transformation to portray LaMotta in his later years. The production took a four-month break, during which De Niro gained an astonishing 60 pounds. The actor's diet, which included lots of pasta and ice cream, took a toll on his health. De Niro reportedly had trouble breathing and developed high blood pressure as a result. The role won De Niro his second Academy Award for Best Actor and made him one of the best actors of his generation. And there is the bell. But did LaMotta do it soon enough? Jack, Jack! Just a little friendly conversation, George. Jim Carrey's portrayal of comedian Andy Kaufman in Milos Forman's Man on the Moon is a great example of method acting taken to the extreme. Carrey was so dedicated to the role that it was hard to tell where the performance ended and reality began. This made for a great on-screen portrayal, but also created some challenges for the production. Throughout the filming process, Carrey refused to break character, fully embodying not only Andy Kaufman, but also Kaufman's abrasive alter ego, Tony Clifton. This unwavering dedication to staying in character didn't just affect his interactions with the cast and crew while the cameras were rolling. It extended far beyond that. For director Milos Forman, Carrie's immersion into the role was particularly challenging. The well-known director found himself in a strange position, having to ask his main actor to let him speak to him. This story really shows how deeply Carrie had immersed himself in Kaufman's character. In fact, the director felt like he'd lost access to the actor himself. It wasn't until years later that we really saw how intense Carrie's method approach was during production. In 2017, a documentary called Jim and Andy the Great Beyond came out, showing what went on behind the scenes while they were making Man on the Moon. This documentary offers a fascinating, sometimes unsettling look at Carrie's process, combining contemporary interviews with archival footage from the set. And this is for my mother! And this is for my father! And this is for my grandfather! To your humble abode. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, a master of method acting, went above and beyond during the filming of My Left Foot. In this highly acclaimed biopic, Day-Lewis played Christy Brown, an Irish artist and writer born with cerebral palsy. He was so dedicated to the role that he refused to break character even when the cameras weren't rolling. Day-Lewis wanted to stay in his wheelchair the whole time, so the crew had to carry him around and even spoon-feed him during meals. This unwavering commitment to authenticity, while resulting in a powerful performance, reportedly created some challenges for the production team. It's interesting to note that Day Lewis's extreme method acting techniques have not only earned him critical acclaim, but also led to some unexpected consequences. After filming The Boxer, he reportedly had phantom pain in his hands for years, which was a physical manifestation of his mental immersion in the role. He's won three Academy Awards for Best Actor, making him the only male actor to win this award three times. That's it. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get your wheelchair, Christy. Into my heart, I am a simple man, like you. Forrest Whitaker's portrayal of Ugandan dictator Idi Amin in Kevin MacDonald's The Last King of Scotland 
is a great example of method acting taken to the extreme. Whitaker's dedication to authenticity and his immersive approach to the role resulted in a powerfully convincing performance that earned him numerous accolades, including an Academy Award for Best Actor. To prepare for the role, Whitaker spent months learning to speak Swahili and Kakwa, two languages spoken in Uganda, to accurately capture a means linguistic background. Whitaker also made sure to follow the diet of the character he was playing. To physically embody a mean, he ate a diet of mostly mashed bananas and beans, which were staples in Amin's diet. Perhaps most striking of all, Whitaker stayed in character both on and off the set throughout the film's production. Director Kevin McDonald was amazed by how committed Whitaker was. He said Whitaker's approach was like an extreme version of Konstantin Stanislavski's method acting. Once filming wrapped up, he found it tough to fully step away from the character. Whitaker shared a touching moment when he realized the production had wrapped up. I remember the first day when I realized we were done. I was in the shower, trying to find my voice and scream to let myself feel free. Whitaker went on to say that some things stayed with him for a long time as a result of his portrayal. Who shows fear, he is weak, and he is a slave. Adrian Brody's portrayal of Władysław Spielmann in Roman Polanski's The Pianist is a great example of an actor's dedication to a role. It really shows the impact of method acting. To play the Holocaust survivor pianist, Brody made some big changes to his lifestyle to reflect aspects of Spielmann's experience. He gave up the comforts of his modern life, selling his car, moving out of his apartment, and disconnecting his phones. With just two bags in hand, Brody relocated to Europe, immersing himself in an environment more akin to Spillman's world. Brody's physical transformation was just as striking. In just six weeks, he lost 30 pounds and got a look that was really in line with a man trying to make it in the Warsaw Ghetto. Brody's dedication didn't stop at the physical transformation. He spent hours each day practicing Chopin's complex piano compositions. All that hard work paid off, as Brody was able to play Chopin convincingly on screen, which added another layer of authenticity to his performance. Inhabiting such a harrowing character was a significant emotional experience. Brody later said that it took him over a year to fully recover from the psychological impact of the role. Brody's hard work paid off. He was recognized for his efforts with an Academy Award for Best Actor at the age of 29, making him the youngest actor to win in that category at the time.